All right, we'll go ahead and get started. My name is Steve Walker. I'm the uh, uh, Ag Coach Program Specialist uh, out of Little Rock, Arkansas. I'm going to be the facilitator today. I've got the easy job. I'm uh, given the task of uh, starting on time and ending on time. We have two great uh, presenters here today. Uh, Vanessa Moore is going to talk on the loan side of the, micro, the new micro loans. And we also have Carol Brown, uh, who's going to talk about the non-assured assistance uh, program, which is uh, NAP, short for NAP. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Now, we want to make sure that everybody get a ticket. Uh, we want to make sure you get a ticket. I think uh, Angela, she's not back there right now, but she's going to come in. Make sure you get a ticket. Two things we'll ask you to make sure you pick up a ticket and make sure you also you get a survey uh, form so we'll have you complete that uh, you know, at the end of the class so they can uh, uh, consider the results right here. So our first present of the day, and we're going to do 30 minutes each, and then if you can, if you can hold your your uh, your questions to the end, uh, we sure would appreciate it, and then we're going to get ready at the end, we'll give everybody a chance to uh, ask questions. Our first presenter now is Vanessa Moore, she's going to talk on the new micro loan for Farm Pro. She has the floor. Good morning. Good morning. We're going to get right started, because I mean, it's micro loan, so I probably won't need 30 minutes, but I'm going to make sure Carol has plenty of time. You know, we have a uh, said big dream on a small scale. Tell you a little bit about our agency. We are who is FSA, Farm Service Agency. It is a branch under the United States Department of Agriculture, and I work with the Farm Loan Programs, which is a branch under the Farm Service Agency. We provide credit to agriculture producers who are unable to get credit from anyone else. And we also provide to special emphasis programs such as SDA uh, women, beginning farmers, and minorities. An introduction on our loan programs. If you are a farmer or rancher who is unable to obtain credit from any other sources, then we will be able to assist you. Uh, we have different type of loans. If, if you want more details of what I'm giving you today, you can contact your local county office. This is a chart, let me back, where this is a chart of all our programs and a breakdown of their criteria. We have a direct farm ownership loan. The maximum loan amount is $300,000. Up to 40 years, the interest rate is fixed. We get a monthly interest rate. Sometimes it changes and sometimes it does not. We have a direct down payment. The lowest of the following is 45% of the farm or ranch purchase price, 45% of the appraised value of $500,000, whichever is the last. Terms up to 20 years, same fixed interest rate. Our direct operating loans, $300,000, term one to seven years, interest rate fixed. Now one year for an annual production loan, up to seven years for equipment loan or refinancing. We have an emergency loan, which is our direct EM. The lowest of the following, 100% of the actual or physical loss of $500,000. Now, $500,000 is maximum amount that you can borrow it and have principal balance outstanding at one time. Term from one to seven years for up to 20 years if you use real estate, non-real estate, one to seven years. Up to 40 years for physical loss on real estate, fixed interest rate. This, all of these loans are found on our direct program, and now we have a guarantee our guaranteed programs, the same type of loans, different banker, different financial uh, lo lender, which would be your bank, your local approved lenders. You go to your local bank, if they are approved lender, you can get a guaranteed loan ownership loan. The maximum loan amount is adjusted annually for inflation, and I think you can go up to like uh, 1355000 about that with me, for that. Up to 40 years in um, years, and it's whatever negotiated rate with the lender. We have an operating loan, which is also guaranteed. The maximum loan amount is adjusted annually, and it's $101,355,000. One to seven years, uh, you have um, a line of credit for one to five, it's five years, but if you want, uh, like by equipment or refinance debt, you can go up to seven years. The interest rate depends on what's with the bank at the time. We have conservation, guaranteed conservation, and guarantee land contract loans. They are also financed with our guarantee programs. And this is assist if you have an approved contract through NRCS, we can finance your part. They are the same max, the uh, maximum loan amount in years, up to 20 years, and for each of that. We have a youth loan program. The maximum amount is $5,000, one to seven years. They have the same interest rate as our direct on, uh, operating loan. And to qualify for our youth loan, you have to be within, you know, uh, participating with 4-H or extension office or S, um, 
future homemakers of America, something like that. And it has to be a project. Now, we're not trying to put a child in business. We're trying to finance a project. And they have the same rates as our regular operating loans. Now to our new loan, microloan. We developed this microloan program to better serve our unique a unique financial operating needs for our small farm for small farmers. Uh, most of the time, you know, you're you have a problem marketing your crop or either financing your operation for you. Most of these farmers they farm off of credit cards, high interest rate, or out of the pocket their pocket because they're just small farm. They're not gonna make enough money to cover a big loan, but you have to at least make a thousand dollars in profit. We uh, fulfill a need to assist the applicants who have limited experience by providing them with an opportunity to gain farm management experience, and experience while working with a mentor. You eliminate the use of a high-cost personal loan and high-interest rate credit cards. <coughs> we provide a bridge between our youth loans and become, as we say, our big farmers, big guys. You know, I mentioned the youth loan prog uh, program earlier. This would bridge the gap between them and going into a full-time farmer assist the agriculture com community or create an opportunity to start new businesses. What is a microloan? Microloans are direct farm operating loans, either annual or term, that do not exceed $35,000. It's a simple application. I think we passed out some of those. Now that application has all the other forms that are required for the uh, direct loan, but on a small scale. So you need to complete the entire application. You can't leave any of it blank, even if you have to put zeros because that's your financial statements in there, your budget. Now, we expect you to complete the budget. That's a small application. Go, this is it on, on front and back. Okay. These are some of the things that can be used for. Startup expenses, annual expenses such as seed, fertilizer, marketing and distribution expenses, including some family living expenses, you can purchase livestock, any other farm operations, minor farm improvements such as wells and coolers, hoop houses, essential tools, irrigation, and delivery vehicles. Now we have made a few of these. This is our second year with this program. We made a few of these, with, mostly with delivery vehicles and some for irrigation. But we can do any of these as long as it does not go to over $35,000. Here are your eligibility requirements. They have, you know, each program have a different eligibility requirement. So it depends on what your needs are. But for a microloan, you have to be a citizen of the United States or have a, an approved green card, good credit, and repayment ability. And that's just a minor few that the stumbling blocks for most of them, especially uh, the credit part. Then you be an operator of a farmer, have a sufficient managerial ability, be unable to obtain credit elsewhere, you know, if, but you get getting a micro loan that's most lenders don't look at small loans. But have acceptable credit and be a citizen of the United States. For, you know, if you want more detailed information, you go to the website or you can contact your local county office. Got experience. Most of them do not have, our beginning farmers don't have that one year. So if you don't have that one year, you can get a micro loan and just partner with, uh, you know, like for instance, this Mr. Farmer is a farmer, you can go work with him for a year and get some experience, but you can still qualify for the loan while you get that experience with him. Or if you were in the F FA or 4-H, even our youth loan would give you some ex experience. Securing the micro loan. Now this is where it's different from our normal operating loan. If we make you a crop loan with our regular operating loan, that crop will be the security and then we have to get up to 150%. And if we buy you a tractor, all your equipment will be security. But if we make you a crop loan, the crop can be security if you want to borrow $20,000 or you can offer anything else that's got the value of $20,000. It does not have to be what we're purchasing or what we're financing. And if you want to buy livestock and we're spending $20,000, if you can give us something that's $20,000 in value, we do not have to take livestock. But we have to at least be adequate security. Is that before or after you make the agreement? We're going to know before we sign in and bind in the agreements that we are adequate secured. So you can tell us and when we have you into the office to process the loan what you want them to give up for collateral. And if so it, it could be the future. Now. 
it could be what you're going to buy. If we're going to purchase a tractor, that tractor, we going to, if you want to take that. But if you don't want to give that tractor, you have to give us something that's $20,000 in value that we can get a lien on. Or it can be the livestock that we're yes, going to Yes, it can be that. Okay. Yeah, most I definitely. Understand that. Is how you can apply. Or you can contact your local county office. Yeah, it's one, well, it used to be one in every county, but now you just probably need to call it. If you're not sure it's one in your county, you can call your state office and let them tell you where your local county office would be because we're so spread it out so thin now. As I told you, it was um, micro. It's supposed to be quick and simple processing. And the application that we passed out got the majority of the forms we need. As all loans we close, we have to have environmental done. So those forms are additional where you start with your local county office, signing the form up, and then you go to your NRCS, NRCS office mm -hmm. to get your O26. That's what you tell us about your wetland and the higher level areas. <clears throat> to sum it all up, the maximum amount is $35,000 you can borrow it. Short application process and reduce paperwork, supposed to be, and allow some applicants that do not currently meet the experience and managerial requirements to qualify through self-guiding mentorship. That's different from our direct loan. You got to already have that experience when you come in to get a regular. Provide some flexibility and loan security. It assists the agriculture community by creating opportunities to start new businesses. Fulfill financial operating needs of beginning, niche, and the smallest of family farm operations. Now, this adds with all loans we, all our programs, your credit report fee, and at the bottom, your filing fees. This, is, this has not changed this year. It's still $13.50 for individual, $20.50. And seventy-five dollars, and this nor this change is still twelve dollars and sixteen dollars. And that's it. Any questions? You know, like when you get your loan, uh, when is your first payment due? One year one after year, the loan Yeah, right. after the end of the yeah. Most of them come at the end of the, your crop cycle, but one year. Well, say like you got cows, you waiting on some of them waiting on to have babies, you know. Eighteen months. Eighteen months. Then sometimes you can just pay interest only. And then that's the next year the full payment comes. What's the typical credit? Pardon me? What's the, you mentioned credit, but is it a, what standard is credit score? Does you have we don't look at credit score. We look at your, we if you review each item, like collections and judgments and a whole lot of slow pay, not good. But if you have no credit, that's not, that's not held against you. No, just poor credit. Yes, sir. Do you have to take out insurance on the cattle or the equipment, or do you all have it? We don't sell insurance, and we recommend it. I didn't know you can insure livestock, but Farm Bureau, what I can understand, can. Yes, ma'am. Is it a lot payment at the end? Of yes, it is. Is it a lot payment at the end of one year, or is this? Um, is it a what now? Do you have to pay the full sum, or is it paid out in a number of years? Okay, now if you're getting a crop loan, let's do it in one year. It's at, uh, the interest rate today is 2%, and I think to start in the first be 2.5% or 225, one of them. But it's just for the crop loan. But if you get an equipment, if you buy new equipment, which I'm sure you cannot buy for 35, not well, not no big equipment. It's from used equipment from three to five years and new equipment seven years at that whatever the interest rate is for those years, number of years. At the going interest rate? Well, it's fixed. Like if you close your loan today, like I said, it's 2%. But if you close it, yeah, it's, it's not already changed. And I did bring out new interest rate. I can't find it. Uh, it's just that it's fixed. Okay. Yes, sir. Starting March the 1st on our operating loan is 2.25%. Yes, sir. If you buy used equipment, do you all have to pray the equipment first? Or whatever the well, we price. get them if you buy it from an individual, we kind of get an estimated value on it. Yes, you all send your own appraisal out. Yes, we'll look at now. We're going to look at all of the once you purchase it, we're going to come look at all. Now, we, we're going to be sure about the value before we finance it. 
But after all of it's purchased, we're going to come and look out and look at it, and we're going to add it to our security agreement that you'll you know, sign. Uh, but we're going to give an estimated value on it before we purchase it. How long does the process take? We have, now if you turn in the application complete, now as I say, it's two of us and we service like seven in this area, like six or seven counties, we move pretty quickly. But if we get to your application and you haven't completed it, then we're going to have to, when we review, we're going to have to send it back to you. But we have to ask you a lot of questions. We call you when we have you and you have to fix But this shouldn't take no longer than 15 to 20 days. I mean, once we come coming down the road to you, but once we get to you with this process, it's just a few minutes. Yes, sir. Uh, oh, my God. Um, <laughs> okay, that be all. Okay, let's put our hands together for Vanessa. She did a good job. <laughs> See, I'm, yeah, I work for the ABC. I, I just found out today what Michael Long was, so I'm going to learn it. So I'm, I'm learning myself, so uh, this class is going good. Our next presenter is uh, Carol Brown. She's from the Arkansas State FSA office here in, in, uh, in Little Rock, Arkansas. And she's going to come and talk to you about the non-assured uh, assistance program, which is now. We'll, let's turn the floor to Carol. I'm Carol Brown. I'm an agricultural program specialist. I've been in the state office since 1988. I've created a, a lot of programs. And this one, I've been in this program for the last 15 years. <clears throat> the NAP program. This is what the short version of when you hear it, you hear it now. But it's the non-insured crop disaster assistance program. What they basically is doing is, and principally, it deals with vegetable crops. I want to tell you that. But it can be other crops. And if you got that handout, you'll see, you'll see soybeans on that. You'll see some that is unusual to be, but that is a crop that is not insured in Northwest Arkansas. But people want to have it. In fact, I just did some yields and, and prices for somebody in Carroll County for soybeans and corn for grain. There's a lot of pasture up there, and they use these crops for female livestock. Okay? So that's why you see it on there. It's unusual for the Southeast Arkansas. Um, then it provides assistance for producers when they have a low yield, a loss of your inventory, or prevented planting occurring during a disaster. Natural disasters, drought, excessive rainfall, freezing, so forth. You, and to be eligible, you must be a landowner, you can be a tenant or a sharecropper who shares in the risk. You have to have some risk in it in doing that. You have to have some risk in it. Uh, you can be the a part of a corporation, and you be an individual. But unless you're in a part of that corporation, you must have a percent of risk in there. In that corporation, you must have a percent of risk. That's how we determine what kind of payment you're going to get. Should that be a payment? It's not a payment all the time. It's not a payment. Um, we look at your AGI, which is otherwise referred to the adjusted gross income. It cannot exceed $500,000. We don't even have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> we don't even have a problem. <laughs> but every now and then, we do have approaching that. Approaching that. And to, you cannot exceed 500000 be eligible for that. Uh, the crops must be commercially produced agricultural crops, which you can get a, for which catastrophic protection level. Let me explain that's not available. Say, for instance, I just talked about corn for grain. Uh, but that's, you can get catastrophic coverage. When we go to, we look at these crops, we look at the yield, we go on to risk management agency for our crop insurance rates and yields. That's what we're doing. We're basing everything that we do on against the catastrophic coverage. 
we can have, let's say, vegetables are not normally issued. They're just not normally issued. Most of the vegetables grown in Arkansas are not. Now you look at California, the asparagus, broccoli, cauliflower, yes they are, but not in Arkansas. So that's what you have to look at. Well, how do you get the insurance? You can't get this, is, this is what you get now for. You can't get crop insurance, so this is what you, you get to. This is what you got. This is your alternative. You want to grow vegetables. You want to grow vegetables where you can sell it at the farmer's market. Any farmer's market. You want to sell it side of road there. You want to go to, you want to sell it to Walmart. You might have a big enough volume to sell it to Walmart, up Kroger, or the other food stores. This is what we're trying to say. You are marketing something. You must, when you say commercial, now, you can have a three acre garden if you want to. What you want to do? You just garden. You got the garden for the family. That's not what we cover. That's not what we cover. I'm not saying that three acres is not enough. Yes, it is. But you have to commercially market. That's the clue what we're talking about. Okay. It could be an acre, but you can sell it to a grocery store. Yes. Commercial. We're not right. telling you how many acres you can have. But y y y generally, now get to the price of the minute. Okay. So, uh, to tell you, see if it's beneficial to you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Eligible crops. <laughs> crops grown for food. Crops planted and grown for livestock consumption. That's what I was talking about, that grain, corn for grain, and the forage crops, and it's including native forage. On that sheet, you'll see the native, the forage on there. You may you get it. It's on the back side of the... Uh, annual crops to the right side. Now, in this area, I have seen some map coverage for forage. I have seen it. You're going to see a lot of it in southwest Arkansas. All along that border, the west, from northwest to southwest, you're going to see it. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, when we had that drought, they were glad they had it. They were glad they had it. So I would say to you, if you do have livestock, mm -hmm. it might be to your benefit to get it. You never know, especially when we had a drought. That just knocked a lot of people just out of the box. And then they realized, whoa, I didn't have that. And it just, you know, they wish they had it. This, this is something to think about. The crops must be grown in a controlled environment such as mushrooms and floriculture. Now, let me say something about that controlled environment. Um, you can have those mushrooms and floriculture, but the whole idea here is that your crops will be exposed to some weather conditions. Okay. That's the general idea. If they are not exposed, how do you expect us to feed them? They're not exposed. You, you, you're not putting it in the environment, natural environment, that, that will be exposed to drought, to excessive rainfall, to freezing. Even we had a bad bout with the freezing of the pigeons. A bad bout. Eligible crops. Look at it. Down south of Arkansas, Hempstead County, Lafayette County, Calhoun County, Hot Spring County, Garland County. Hey, that's becoming a big thing. Value loss crops such as agriculture, Christmas trees, ginseng, ornamental nursery, and turf bread. We don't have too much of that, but we do have agriculture. That is in uh, Cross County, in that area. Yeah. Down in southeast Arkansas, we do have, we can get map insurance on Arkansas. We have had payments on Arkansas. Sea oats, we don't have that. Seed crops that, uh, the, where the propagation of stock is produced for sale, the seed stock for other eligible. And I, I think we have something like that. Sesame. 
Sesame is becoming in Walnut Ridge, Lawrence County, Sharp County, Randolph County, those counties. Sesame is becoming the big island. In Oban Franklin County, Sebastian County, Sesame has become, it, it's the trending, it's trending right now. You must contact your crop insurance agent for questions regarding the insurability of crop. Mm -hmm. Now you know down in here, soybeans are insured. So you can look at that thing and say, oh, you got now, but you know soybeans are insured down in the back. And just like that, they should be Well, you need to contact your FSA county office, the nearest one, if you, you think you can. You want to know, but generally you know your area. Right. You got a question? You got a question? Uh, let me ask you a question. Uh -huh. Okay, like on your um, crop, do you, like with insurance, you have to have a well. Do you have to have a well here? Or you can have we, a water hole? We, we don't go with that detail in it. All we're saying is, if you cannot get crop insurance on it, mm -hmm. you take out NAP insurance. That's all we're saying. We don't go into the details if you got a well or not like that. If you, let, let's go a little bit further since you're talking about the well. Okay. If you have a crop, you know good well that is supposed to be irrigated and you don't need that, but you come in and you buy, you say, I want to irrigate. Mm -hmm. We got irrigated, non-irrigated. I'll give you a yield for irrigated and non-irrigated. Uh -huh. But if you do not irrigate, and you said you're going to irrigate, you're going to get that non-irrigated rate. Okay. You're going to get the non-irrigated rate because you said you were going to irrigate. Okay. And you didn't. So you know you're going to have a loss. And you know you should have irrigated. You know you're going to have a loss. So you can't expect us to give you the higher yield mm -hmm. for that for that, that low yield. You can't right. expect it. Because that's where that we don't get into the details of the well or whatever. But that's how that comes into it. When, you don't, when you don't do what you're supposed to do. Okay. Okay, so say adverse weather conditions. And trust me, you see that earthquake up there? Public County, up by Greenberg, you might have a situation when that's coming to try right now. New Madrid, Fall, you might have a situation where the earthquake did affect your crop. It's, it's not too far-fetched right now. We used to think about it then in years past, but it's not too far-fetched right now. And they have added that in, that, that earthquake deal. Uh, <clears throat> natural disaster must occur during the coverage period. You go and buy NAP insurance today, which is a fact for most of the crops today's today. You go by, it takes effect within 30 days. Okay. Take effect within 30 days. And you had, say, for instance, I'm going to go back and the net closing date has passed for green. You should have bought them January 1st. You come in, you bought that, and then you plant your greens, final planting date, I'm not sure what it is now, it's spring. You get in there, and you know how this weather's changed right now? We might go into a deep freeze. You got a loss. What do you do? You go with it, it's, it's in the garden. I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but I just want to tell you, you got a loss. I was just using that as an example. But the greens do grow down in this part. Right. And they grow, you can grow them where you want them to grow. But they are plentiful down when you get down in central, southeast, and so forth. You get those greens and you planted them, and you know, they start coming up. Lo and behold, this, this weather just blows on the cold. I mean, it just gets unusually cold. You're probably near Eastern, and you got some, some messed up, frozen, frozen. What do you do? Within 
First thing you know to say, you know those swing signs are going to be in to get you any kind of use. You go within 15 calendar days, not mm -hmm. this is on 15 calendar days, and report it to your nearest county. Wherever you about that, and that policy, go in there, it says, you do out a request for a loss. We have a, a law suggestion. You're going to request one. We're going to send that. They ain't going to take whatever your production is, and then you got to lose 50% of your crop. Right. Once that 50%, then you with 55% of the price, and that price is determined. Not but what Carol Brown says, not but what my supervisor said. We have a method to our madness. That method is mm -hmm. we take from the National uh, Agriculture Statistical Service, we have yield reduction that have been gathered from surveys that farmers give. Now, in Arkansas, how much say? They don't give us too much. They <laughs> sure don't. They don't give us too much. So what do we use to determine what is a yield 50% of a actual yield, or level average, we call it? What do we do? <laughs> Yes, a lot of times we do. Go to LSU, they got good information. They got good they information. Huh? LSU and LSU and Summer. We go to LSU. Okay. A lot of times we get that information to use for Arkansas. We just in the last since two thousand and nine began to get information for Arkansas sweet potatoes. We're glad to get it. We're glad to get it. Um, the sweet potatoes are become a very marketable item, and we would like to see more of it, and so it's been consistent since 2009. We use that. Um, so we take that information from Louisiana. Let me say this. Some farmers have asked us for broccoli. You think we want a lot of broccoli in Arkansas? I don't think so. And where it's going is North Carolina. North We asked somebody, somebody asked us for the other day for Ash Perry. Okay, we asked for Ash Perry. But guess what? When you go in and ask for Ash Perry to drop it, you know how long it takes for me? Yes. How long? Three years. Three years. Yeah, three years. Yes, sir. Three years for material. So, do you need to buy nap polish on that asparagus and broccoli? You might not get any benefit out of first year. You won't get any benefit. But it's good to keep that production. It's good to have it because once you establish your production and whenever it comes in, you have. Yes. You can actually get the roots already rooted for two years. And two years. Try to get produced. Yeah, you can do that. But you you understand the history. I just you understand. Are you, I'm probably the one you've been talking. No, I I don't know. I'm just saying somebody did, and you're not the only one. In the past, we've asked somebody for broccoli mm -hmm. and asparagus, but they have been usually people from up north where they You know, usually the people who have asked for it, they have been people the moms. The who? The moms. That's a group of minority farmers, mm -hmm. the moms, and they generally come from um, like California, somewhere around like there, the West Coast, Seattle, and so forth. So that's what we do. We we get a, a number of things, and I I scratch my head sometimes. Where am I going to get some? Where am I going to get it? But I, I trust me. We will get you some. Trust me, we will get you some. It may take me a little bit, but I get it. I'll search all through all kinds of research. To what get about you? I got a farm going to start ginseng. It's one of those crops, isn't it? Yeah. But I have to research it because we never had anybody ask for it. And it takes seven years for the harvest. Mm -hmm. So we have to look into, <laughs> you know, what is it beneficial for you to buy it? You know, it's going to take you that long. It's a thousand, if you do when the horse you harvest, it's a thousand dollars per pound. Mm. 
But you have to think about it. It's expensive to grow. It's expensive to grow. But it's it's still growing. It's expensive to grow. I know. And then what's gonna happen in those seven days? Ten years that you you know, your cost of keeping it alive and you know, and doing the whatever you need to do to keep it stable. You know, to grow in that sense. You have to think about that. No. Yes, ma'am. I want, this is what I'm saying. And now program is not here to get your problem. It's here to keep Cut. you, keep you a little bit of flow that you want to go under. Uh, vegetable crops are becoming the thing, the norm. But this, this, this thing on a salt, I would say a salt of obesity, and this 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 thing for about us urging to be more healthy and to stamp out heart disease, especially now for women, we are beginning to see that it's very beneficial to grow vegetables. And that's what NAP usually takes care of. Of course, we take care of the grasses too, and the forage too. We, we don't leave anybody out. We take the forage and those grasses too. We got a lot of that in southwest Arkansas. And it's going to be very, very beneficial. I can tell you today when you have a man. Why do you keep saying southwest? Because I'm, I'm targeted on certain crops. Now, if you're in the southeast, you're in Delta, vegetables is going to be what the norm is. Okay. Not saying you can't grow vegetables over there in, in uh, Calhoun <laughs> County. I'm not saying that. But what your tendency, the trend is, because I've been, been doing this for a while. I know. And what I'm trying to say to you, look at what is beneficial to you to do. If you want to start trying to grow a whole lot of greens over in, in Lafayette County, you might. You might have some land over there that you think who can you carve out. You are, well, the whole idea is for you to get some kind of farm. That's what we're looking at. Commercial produce. That's all that. I'm not charting any necessary one area that I will map is not going to be. I'm saying what the trend has been, what is beneficial to do. The whole idea, what is beneficial to you? Okay. Okay. Go back, White Carol. Go back to that. The last one down there. You what? saying you're doing like eligible farmers and ranchers? You now cover livestock? Uh, uh, where? Now. The last bullet. Eligible this one, farmers. eligible farmers and ranchers, meets the definition. Limited resource farmers will have their service fee waived. So you you can get now for livestock? No, that's not what they say. What are you saying? Ranchers? So why does it say rancher then? Rancher means that. I talked about the forage crop. Oh. That's what is in relative, uh, the forage, grazing and forage. If you got some uh, uh, pasture land out there, okay. yeah, it's so what you're some. using okay. to feed your cattle. Your hay. Alfalfa uh, grazing. <coughs> yeah, right there. and alfalfa is very high. Okay, okay, let's go back to this limited resource farmer. You can get your feed way. Now, limited resource farming refers to that. It is not necessarily socially disadvantaged. Let me make me clear. Map covers limited resource. That means income. You can go to a, a website and figure out for that county how much, you, you know, if you are a limited resource. You generally you know that's doing that. But go to the county office and they can, you can go to that website and come. Um, plan for coverage. Today, if you look at this sheet, it is the last day for a number of crops that we do, a number of them. Uh, March 15th, you may look, it's, it's, it's a little bit different. March yeah. the 15th? Yeah. Is the last day you can sign the 20th? No, no. February 28th, today, mm -hmm. is the last day you can sign up for a number of the crops on the list. You got a list? Yes, ma'am. But look at it. And look, 
Look at the back. Mm -hmm. Raising and mm -hmm. 2014. I don't know what it's going to say for the 2015 crop year. I cannot mm -hmm. go that far. I tell you what. I cannot go. That. I'm only going for 2014. I know these are coming for 2014. We've already established the 44 bill come out. So. Mm -hmm. Let's deal with 2014. I'm not going to go into 2015 yet. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, limited resource. You will get it every year that you qualify. You know you have limited resources. You're on a fixed income. You know you have limited resources. But the deal is, you can get it. Isn't it a question? Can you go ahead and apply for this, even though you don't have none in the ground? Yes. Yeah. I mean, you have to apply today for the form. We don't have the right, yet. right, right. You do. Okay. You do. You do. So we, we've got to we got to run home. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically what this is saying. Yeah. It, you know, I have done this. We should have had this conference a month ago, girl. <laughs> I know. I did talk about it a month ago in, in Fargo. Yeah, that's fair. That, that ain't right. I've been working on money for the last week. Uh-huh. I did talk about it in Fargo. Fargo. Yes. Yes, yeah, I did talk about it in Fargo. But my, my, my deal is... <laughs> Blue and white is February 28th. Last year was February 24th. Is that your name? No, this one I'm working with Fargo. Oh. Last year, the 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 the, the, the conference was February the twenty fourth, twenty second. I was talking about it then, and you had a little bit more time. Um, is it possible to get that? Is it possible to get an application into that? I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Is it online? No, no, it's not. Oh, good Lord. Hmm? Is it the insurance policy? You see these here. Is that? You put the emoji down. No, it shouldn't. I think I've. Okay. Fee. Two hundred fifty dollars per crop. Per crop. Per crop. A seven hundred fifty dollars per producer. When I say producing, it can be a corporation. It can be a corporation. It can be John Jones LLC. So that's a bad way to go. Let me John Jones LLC. Seven hundred and fifty dollars. You in Lincoln County? Seven hundred and fifty dollars for you some what's on that for February twenty eighth? Squash corn. Cantaloupe corn. Cantaloupe corn. It, 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 you can get out of them. But let me say this to you. If you have a spring and a fall crop, mm -hmm. today you sign up for the spring and fall, you still gonna make seven hundred and fifty dollars for the whole spring. You still okay. gonna pay $750. And if you're a limited resource producer, mm -hmm. you pay nothing, but you must sign this, I think it's 517 or something, FSA 517. You sign that, you are certified that you are limited resource, you can sign up for every last one of the thing. But let me tell you this, yeah. if there is a spring and a fall crop and you do not sign up for the fall crop today, and you have a disaster, and those foul crops. You're not what? You're not covered. Okay. You're not covered. <laughs> I, I just want to make that clear to you. <laughs> You're not covered. Okay. So that's basically you have to do it every year if you're a limited resource. Do it every year. As long as you do it every year, you're covered. Okay. As long as you got that limited income. Okay, got all the application closing date. I told you February 28th, mm -hmm. and then March 15th is basically for those forage and those uh, other crops. We do have people with forage, and, and, and they, uh, trust me, they benefit from it. They did. Uh, you got to do a crop acreage report. Now, I used to do this, but Mr. Walker over there, he takes those crop acreage reports now. And the, those dates will have to be, you know, you get them from the county office. You get them from your for county office. That thing that I told you about, if you got a loss, 
must be reported 15 calendar days, not business days. When you see as a parent out there, you got that free, you know, say when you got pictures, pictures way back in 11, 15, 1130, yeah, you can do those. You way back in there, you saw that free, and we don't get some right out there. Look at that. Our yeah, grain yeah. froze in South East. I'm from uh, Chico County. Mm -hmm. And we used to grow a lot of grain. Mm -hmm. But so you didn't buy no that phone. No, I ain't buy, I ain't know nothing about it, Justine. <laughs> well, now you know. Now I know. Can I sign now, up right now and then you can transfer me to Chico County? Nah. <laughs> I tried. Sorry, sorry about that. No, 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 no. Okay, you're going to tell me what you're going to say is that's what we call a CCC 570 notice of laws. We're going to send somebody out there. Uh, do you suspect next year you all use these same closing dates except for 1500? Yes. I suspect yes, sir. They've been stable for the last, I don't know when. It just stayed the last one. We only maybe looked at that sweet corn because somebody had a, and in fact, there were things down in, uh, what's the text count? Middle count. Somebody brought it up, and we didn't, we investigated, we researched. That's why sweet corn got up to the date that it is. We, that's how it got up there last one. So, you know, if you have some questions about it, you know, if you say this, and we also looked at, Sometimes when the producers has evidence, like sugar pumps, we had no knowledge of what the things were Somebody from Pulaski County gave us the knowledge. We didn't use their name or anything, but we used that to get the farmers a better deal and rate. So when you are willing to, let us use your stuff. For something we don't have no earthly idea on what it is, mm -hmm. because if we have, listen, let, let me give you an example of tomatoes. We use corporate extension service uh, quite a bit. We have that, they have the fact sheets. Somebody asked mm -hmm. us recently, can you have a, we call them planted period one, two, three, five. Somebody says, can we have a fall plane of eggplant? He said, no, we've been using just one period because eggplant is continuous growing. Oh, and we find that out. That's what we were thinking anyway. We only had one time. But because this farmer says, well, I want to do a second plan in the fall, we investigated. We talked to someone, a doctor up in, in vegetable person in extended UA, and lo and behold, guess what? We got to talk to the European. European eggplant. It became about because of pharmacy. This is what I want to do. We can't just say no. Mm -hmm. We have to go further, and that's what we do. We, we, we try, we are farmer friends. We are not trying to say this is it, but there are certain things that we know that we've been dealing with for years and years, and that's why we say one time for sweet potatoes. That's why we say that, because we mm -hmm. have knowledge of it. That's why we say it. Okay, you, you know about that. You got to timely report your laws. Mm -hmm. And you're going to fill out the form, and you're going to certify on that, that this is what I got. This is what I got. How you calculate it? You must be in excess of 50% of losing that crop. You can, the limitation, and I'm not saying it's going to change, but may. Limitation right now, $100,000. I said that. Per year. Per crop. Per crop year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Per crop year. Per individual entity. When I say you can be an entity, you can be an individual. You have a corporation, you have LLC, and then you have an individual. Mm -hmm. Okay? With different crops now. We're we, we having different crops here. Mm -hmm. With different crops. It's, it's complicated. It gets complicated for the person who got to pick it up. 
right. in the county office. We can talk to them. Uh, so, anybody got any questions? If I have not already answered. Mm -hmm. It's good for people who, uh, this year, we're going to try to target people in Southeast Arkansas to grow peas. And uh, we have a problem with April down in the area because it's, we have, <coughs> uh, we can plant peas like next month. Mm -hmm. And they'll make our way to October, but then it's a hotter, you know, region down there, but we have a lot of problems with food. Is that yeah. one of those things that 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 on there that says you have this, you know, due to the drought? Did the drought, drought cause these yeah, things? Drought. And so, you know, we used to have an issue with onion worms up in mm -hmm. uh, we had in had the area and somewhere in that area. That April's he can pees up. So, and I, I think we've had that discussion over the years since I've been working with this program. Mm -hmm. And so it's like with the army work. Right. But that that has to come up with within the scope of your filing for your laws. Mm -hmm. And your county committee would have a decision on that. Okay. And uh, whether it's, you know, what they want to do further. Okay. Anybody else got any more questions? You need to run on out and, and sign up. You got to do all this reporting, don't you? Yeah. Huh? You got to have everything. You can't sign up today. You got your $200 million and uh, you know, like I said, if you're a part of the corporation, if you're a part of the corporation, somebody can sign up and get that $250. If you're a part of corporate LLC, somebody has to sign who is an authorized person to sign up. You see what I'm saying? Somebody can sign up. And they do a, a application, manual application. They may not be able to get it from you, but you, you'll have your money, you know, along with that. Can we put our hands together for uh, two presenters? They did good. Oh, they did good. They did real good.